Welcome to Inside the Firm, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and hosted by entrepreneurs, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Each week, they take you on their journey of how to start, run, and grow a business by bringing you inside their architecture and real estate development firm. Get a behind the scenes tour of how these business leaders manage their clients and foster company culture while creating new and innovative projects. And now your host, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. He will design a spaceship. All right, we gotta get we gotta get this show on the road. Welcome to another episode of Inside the Firm. I am your host, Al Rocketship Gore. I am here with Let's Go. Lance to the moon psycho. Hell He's yeah. coming with me. He's coming on the rocket ship. We got a great episode for you today. If it's called if you're a leader, you can't be a people pleaser. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk a little bit about some good uh, indicators of what's going on in the housing industry and then maybe a fun marketing idea for everyone. Before we do, let's pay the bills and how we pay the bills is actually by making you more efficient, making you more profitable. We do that through RevitRocketship.com where yours truly, Lance, and myself have developed a system where we model like it gets built. We set up a template. We set up training so that you can use that template with your firm and with yourself so everyone is on the same page taking responsibility so you get more reward. Go check out RevitRocketship.com. Accurate data is crucial, especially in today's business environment. Outdated and inaccurate data leads to turnarounds, delays, and rising costs. With supply chain and staffing issues, these costs and delays can multiply. That's why a resource like RCAT.com is so important. RCAT works with manufacturers to keep their data up to date and accurate and offers it to you easily accessible and free. Use RCAT's powerful search engine to find what you need and download it right there on their website without needing to pay anything or even register. So try RCAT.com today. That's A R C A T.com. Al, back to you. Okay, first, let's go right into the headline. Nice. Which is people pleasing leadership effects. Yeah. And its effects. And can I tell you, okay, I've got it. Uh, so, yeah. I've, do you know why I pulled this topic up today? Because you want to self-justify you being an a-hole? That, not only that. <laughs> not only I, that I hope there's like a new listener. Not like, only that. Guy. Not only that. Not him. He must be retracting. <laughs> not only that. So uh, my daughter overhears some, some of our conversations sometimes. Sure. In the car. Yeah. Right? Um, and I don't think that's bad, uh, from a just osmosis standpoint. Cause you know, you, you hear about all these, uh, very influential business leaders and their children and the children who then become successful. I yeah. hear, there's a lot of osmosis that happens where they're just like, I don't know. I, I grew up with my dad or whatever going to job sites. Well, a, a, a big one, you hear it in every industry, but I hear it a lot in the construction industry yeah. because it's hard. And if you come up on job sites all the time and you realize what's going on, it won't be abnormal to you that you're dealing with grumpy people, that people aren't showing up on time and you have to manage it and you have to, you know. So uh, my daughter o- overheard us talking about something tough where we had to be effective leaders by not being people pleasers. And she looked, she, so her reaction and, and like, it took us actually, she, she, we got off the phone. I just about got to the office and she turns to me and she, we just pulled in, we pulled in here to go to home and she goes, or I was going to go to the office or whatever. And she goes, are you a people pleaser? And I go, no, I've never been a people pleaser. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. She goes, I, I know. I just was asking. I go, <laughs> I go, are you? And she goes, yeah, I think so. I couldn't do what, what you and uncle Al are talking about. This was me and you having a conversation. Did you give me like what was I, we talked so much? We had an, a we had a very difficult, yeah, okay, uh, executive sort of meeting at the end of the day yesterday, right? Yep. Uh, and we had to we had to say some things that were uh, straightforward. Took some guts. Yep. Straightforward, all that, right? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, and she go, yeah, so she goes, I don't know if I could do that, and I go, that's a really good point, Kaya. You know, like you have to, you can't be a people pleaser if you're going to be an effective leader. So that's why I brought it up. And I thought like, oh my gosh, how, uh, how timely. So thanks Kaya for the, my one topic that I'm adding to the show today. And can I say why it's important before we get into, and here's the reason why. Yeah. I'll break, even though I hate this, there's two types of people in this world and school makes it this way. They, tr- they try to make one type of person. 
and I know it's an oversimplification, but I understand it because I have kids in school. You have kids in school. I'm also on the school board yeah. is please, for the love of God, do what you're supposed to do. Child, right? Stop eating toothpaste. You're five years old. What is going on? Yeah. Please comply with the actions, yeah. right? And, and, and it's very hard to give them the freedom to, they want to climb trees now. So like I come home and they're up in the trees and stuff. I'm oh, like, that's it's cool. Kind of, it's kind of dangerous, but I'm like, mom's not, mom's taking a bath. So I guess I'm in charge, right? So we'll see how that goes, right? Nice. Climbing but, trees. <laughs> climbing cool. trees. Climbing trees. <laughs> <laughs> um, you need people to do things and, and we teach. And I really want the kids to learn Revit and do it the right way. And then we try to give them that creative thing. Okay, now make your own house later, right? But there's so much of conform, do, conform, do, conform, do, Check conform, do, that I see stupid shit happening all the time. Mm. And I'll be in a board meeting or something like that. And literally it'll hit me out of the blue. And I go, man, if I speak up, people are going to think that like I just hate whatever I'm speaking out against. Like, like, like every single thing. Is that your fear? No, no, no. Oh. Just like take a topic, oh. right? Whatever, whether, and I want to be like, this is dumb. We shouldn't do this. And whoever wrote that in there, We'll probably take events, and a lot of people are people pleasers. So, uh, the majority of people are people pleasers, honestly. Seventy to ninety percent. Yep. But if you're literally just following the crowd, we will do dumb things. I'll, I'll do. I know the most apolitical ever is, even though people might take some offense to us, we literally shouldn't be spending more than we bring in in the federal government. Like it makes no sense whatsoever, mm -hmm. except for the fact that. The politicians on both sides want to be people pleasers and give their exactly. money support. Exactly. So like yeah. no one someone has to not be a people pleaser exactly. because the bubble will burst. Yeah. That that's why I again, my one of my favorite phrases that I've come up with is have the uh, have the courage to be disliked. Yeah. Um <clears throat> okay, let's get into the I let's get into the article quickly here. People pleasing this is on LinkedIn, March twenty eighth, twenty twenty three. Rebecca Allen, a women's career coach. Hmm. People pleasing leadership is is it effective? So what's wrong with being a people pleaser when you're a leader? Perhaps you've been given some feedback that you're too much of a people pleaser. Perhaps you've been ple people pleasing behavior doesn't fit in, fit in with the culture you're in, and perhaps, quite frankly, it does. More on that later. People pleasing is a psychologically agreeable behavior, and let's start by acknowledging first all the potential benefits of being agreeable, such as being. And being regarded as being an active listener, agreeable personalities and, and leaders would likely score high on empathy. You'll be someone who tries hard to see things from other people's perspective as much as possible. And in communal societies and cultures where the group is seen as being more important than the individual, being an agreeable leader can have massive benefits and help build rapport. So those are all positive things, right? Um, mm -hmm. And people, there's, I can now kind of uh, get a little more terse with and not read verbatim here, but... You know, how do you know if you people please? You're probably saying stuff like, yes, I'll do that for you, or I'll drop everything, um, or I avoid conflict at all costs. Uh, it's my role to be the peacekeeper. Um, I don't want to be the bad guy, right? And then what causes a leader to want to people please? The three big th ones here are like fear of rejection, right? Have the courage, have the courage to be disliked. Maybe you need to have that courage. Uh, fear of not belonging to the group, right? So you need to be instead of just being an individual, uh, fear of isolation is the, the other big one. <clears throat> um, and then how, so there's positives, there's negatives. We know why we're avoiding it, but what, how does this trip leaders up? And what it does is if, <clears throat> if you're a leader who wants to be like, she says, you'll most likely shy away from being too direct with your team or critical of other people's ideas you might struggle giving critical, however, constructive feedback. You will likely avoid conflict at all, confrontation at all costs. And you may even avoid outshining other people in the case that lands you in the dislikable bucket, right? So I, th so your contradictory, you can't like you're, you're either with the group or you're leading the group. And that's, and that's kind of where it's at. You're still with the group as a leader. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, and then uh, I, here's what I had. I had chat GPT, just so oh, you know, Al. I had chat GPT put some better, some cliff notes for us. Okay. So those challenges, again, if you're struck, if you're struggling to give critical feedback, then how can your people grow? 
right? Like if you've got, if you're not just holding their feet to the fire, how are they going to grow? You're avoiding conflict, difficult conversations. You, you can't do that as if you're a leader. You're overworking. This is even worse, right? Mm. So you fail to delegate. And you're sending mix, mixed messages, which, le- which leads to instability, which leads to people not being confident in your team. And you have to, you have to provide a place of safety for them uh, and comfort so that they can be in their workflow. Yes. Right. So if you find yourself being one of these people who ha- doesn't have the courage to be disliked and you're, but yet you're in this leadership position, you need to really, I think, give yourself um, a gut check here. And she ends with three strategies to improve. Uh, so maybe this will hit with you. Number one, uh, I just kind of talked about this. Generate certainty. Provide clarity and direction and decision-making to create team confidence. When I know, I know you have all these conversations with staff all the time where you're like, you'll sit down with, with, with one, of, one of our leaders <clears throat> who is part of their team, right, in the group. But at some point, they run out of, they exhaust themselves with being able to make decisions. And it's me and Al's job to sit down there and go, yes, no, maybe, and provide direction. Like at the very end of their conclusion on something where we're sitting down with them and they got a nice list for us, right? Like we're supposed to be the ones that go just ultra confident, yep. even if we don't know the answer. Yep. Uh, number two, seek respect over likability. There you go. Uh, aim for a balance between a being approachable and authoritative. I should probably try to be a little bit more approachable. Uh, number three, push back and give Feedback, deliver constructive feedback confidently to strike to strengthen team ideas and performance. I have one addition to this. This yeah. is great stuff of what to do. The thing I would add is how to do it. Mm. Right? Because because how do you how do you know what what to do? And, and and how to look at it is whatever your challenge is, whatever obstacle you're facing, take the one eighty perspective on that or the ninety perspective and see if it's true. Yeah. Just do that. Just say like, um, hey, <clears throat> detail A needs to be like this. Well, okay, what if it wasn't? What is the 180 of that? I treat person B like this. What if I tr- treated person C like that? Like whatever it is, like what if you just literally substitute, look from different perspectives. We are all, a lot of architects and engineers are visual people. Move yourself around from mentally from some, different perspectives some people call that straw steel manning some people call it like the litmus test i like the litmus test does it pass the litmus test so yep. are you passing exactly like can you take that situation and apply it to the situation between you and a person and apply it to another person does it pan out like and maybe it doesn't but then like a third one right and that'd be a good test yep in exactly. that kind of overlap so Anyway, I thought it was uh, critical. We sometimes, if you're, again, you're going to have, if you hire people, you're going to have tough decisions to make. You're going to have tough conversations. People have to improve. You have to be the one leading in that kind of way. And you're not going to be effective if you're just not willing to have, be a little bit disliked, but respected. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, next article, Lance. Oh, you already have it. Oh, yeah. Surprising lift of new home sales in July, which mm. is great. A second paragraph, sales of newly built single-family homes in July rose 10.6% to a uh, 739 seasonal adjusted annual rate uh, from a significant upward revision in June. So June was up in the revision, then July. And basically, this is pace of new home sales in July is up 5.6 from a year earlier. Nice. Um January through July of 2024 are up 2.4% compared to 2024 in 2024 compared to the same period in 2023. I really, really hope they thread the needle and, and go through there uh, and everything works out. We will see uh, and hopefully they ungum up the system because I think that the yeah, NHAB is forecasting gradual improvements for the home building sector as the Fed eases monetary policies and mortgage interest rate continues to lower. Um, they're one. As long as they don't blow us up with this election, we should be good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Metaphorically speaking. Yep. Um, okay, the only the NHA uh, National Association of Home Builders does state. The only sustainable way to ease the housing costs is to implement policies that allow builders to construct more attainable, affordable housing. So 
this is where you can be not a people pleasing leader. Yeah. And I wish we had more time, but I can't even list the amount of things that we do already. Um, to tell truth to power. And that truth to power is if you really like what, what is more important and we can actually work on two birds with, with, with one stone or multiple stones, the analogy probably doesn't hold up, but we should go back to 2015 uh, or 2016 codes. Um, and we should work on sustainability on the energy production side, not on the end result side, because the, um, it's not just, on the consumption side. Yep. It's just costing too much and we need too many houses and a great way to solve that. I'm actually more back on the solar panel, uh, train. And the reason why is because everything else besides solar panels is heating up materials to spin a turbine, which I still like nuclear and, and all that, but like you're still making things super hot and adding it to that. Like solar power is just connecting it. And I know people say batteries and, and um, there's a whole bunch of issues with how it's mined and what materials are in it. Yeah, so is everything that you have. Plastic, cars, uh yeah. <laughs> every what what are we talking about here the amount of plastic that's in the ocean like all of these everything doesn't come free without some cost and we can work together to improve it so that was a side rant of being unlike because if you do state that you'll say hey you hate climate change um, we can do everything at once by implementing all these and still getting affordable housing it's like no no you cannot yeah. no you cannot yeah yeah, I uh, it kind of leads me to this. I want to give these guys a shout out. Our good friends over at the Business of Architecture podcast. Uh, they just had me on in episode 565 is architecture and an elitist profession. In there, what Alex is, I, my biggest uh, point I was trying to make with that <clears throat> episode was that I just would like some intellectual honesty. So when we talk about like you just did, where you're acknowledging like, no, everything. But the solar panel people often will leave the, the the little necessary evil parts out. Sure. We would probably get a lot further in this whole solving the issues if we were just honest about all of the possible solutions, which like there is no silver bullet here. It's going to take multiple uh, copper plated bullets. <laughs> yep. Approaches. Yep. Shotgun approach. I always like the shot. Yeah, a yeah, lot no. of big BBs. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Uh and then we'd probably get somewhere. Okay, what do we got last year, Al? Uh, okay, here's a marketing idea for ourselves. Anyone else can steal it. Mm. I kind of took it from Richard Stanford. He's a fan of the podcast in the group. Um, what he does for his tenant improvement clients is nice. after they're done with it, he does a laser scan. He does one before and he does it afterwards. Mm. And there's a program. I'm sure we can Google it or find it or he'll email me. And what you can do is you can translate those and then put those on Google Earth. And he does that for their clients. So just think if you're whatever TI, uh, a dog grooming place, a, a dentist, right? It's actually very helpful. Like if, if I'm navigating to a place and if I can see those little dots inside, I, I'll go inside and go look around their building. So if you're an architecture firm and you have a laser scanner, mm -hmm. you could do that in your own office. And I'm wondering if Google doesn't like this or not, but Lance, like, yeah. I wonder if we could pose in those <laughs> and just be cheesy so you people aren't gonna see like there's this uh plaque we have of we're builders magazine and lance and literally be like cheesy like <laughs> <laughs> slash handsome yeah that's it yeah so that's that's my marketing idea i like the day take it any way you want yeah all right uh we will not be back uh for maybe two weeks um, but we'll have, there's episodes coming out from other platforms that I've been on that we're going to share, uh, on our social media. So watch that. I've been doing a ton of, of press on podcasts. I think I've done like 30 or 40 shows over the last year. It's been really fun and the momentum keeps growing. So watch out for those that you just have to, we'll just, we'll make it up to you in some other way. I'm going out hunting. Everybody, please wish me luck. Al, wish me luck. Yes, I will. I will. We're going to, we're going to kill. I'm going to bring him a nice big fat piece of elk meat. Yeah. No, gonna, I got it. It's going to be great. It's happening. Um, so if you like this episode. Please leave us a positive comment on the iTunes, a uh, positive comment on uh, YouTube, and we will see you in a couple weeks.